Inside New Orleans Sports with Eric Asher is underwritten by... Located on Lake Pontchartrain, Frisbee's Lakefront Restaurant and Bar offers traditional West End favorites, a scenic view, oysters, and numerous tasty options. More information is available at 504-304-4125 or brisbeesrestaurant.com. Mr. Ed's Oyster Bar and Fish House has been shocking here since 1979. Located at 3117 21st Street in Metairie, Mr. Ed's Oyster Bar and Fish House offers raw, fried, and grilled oysters as well as a range of Cajun and Creole dishes. Enjoy a dozen with a smile. Inside New Orleans Sports with Eric Asher is the first place award winner of the 2015 New Orleans Press Club's Excellence in Journalism Award for the category of Best TV Sports Show. Good evening, New Orleans, and welcome to Inside New Orleans Sports. I'm your host, Eric Asher. Over the next hour, we'll talk a lot about the New Orleans Saints. The New Orleans Pelicans will touch on LSU Pro Day. Got a great panel for you, as always. Les East, freelance journalist, NOLA.com, SportsNOLA.com, and National Lampoon. And uh, Garland Gillen of Fox 8 Sports joined us on the program tonight. And guys, welcome to the show. Thanks for coming down. Ought to be a really uh, good uh, debate tonight on what's going on with the home teams. And as always, I'd like to let folks know a little bit about what you're involved in. Why don't you take it away, Les? Thanks, Eric, and uh, good to be back. Um, as you touched on, uh, writing for uh, NOLA.com and SportsNOLA.com, mm -hmm. and uh, recently started contributing to uh, NationalLampoon.com, which I'm sure our audience is familiar mm -hmm. with, uh, branching out a little bit beyond sports, although mm -hmm. there's certainly uh, plenty enough to satirize in sports as well as uh, yes. other news, so uh, it crosses over there sometimes. But uh, that's uh, basically what I'm doing. Good to be back. Well, thanks for thanks for coming down as always, Garland. Welcome back. Oh, great to be here, Eric. Yeah, Fox Eight. Uh, you know, Final Plays our big show at the end of the weekend, but it's going to be full this week of LSU Pro Day. But we also talked to Mickey Loomis for like 10 to 15 minutes. That's going to be a big part of our show, and we're going to talk Pelicans this weekend. Uh, three weeks until the NFL draft, so th we're all geared up. This is this is the month for the draft. And that's the big talking point for the next three weeks. Sean Fazan has been breaking out all the free agents, doing video study, but now it's time to focus on what they're going to do for the draft. Big story today, Adrian Peterson going to be coming to New Orleans next week to um, make a visit. Tim Hightower signed with the 49ers last weekend. You know, I've said on my radio show, I think that is kind of an under-the-radar signing uh, a loss for the Saints. I think it's a big loss. I really do. I thought he played well last year. I thought he pushed Mark Ingram. I like his physical style of running. They don't have another back on this team like that outside of Ingram uh, that, that, again, can give you that physical running, running style. Uh, right now it's um, uh, Daniel Lasco, Marcus Murphy, uh, Travaris Cadet, and Mark Ingram are your running backs. There's been some talk that maybe they might look in the draft for a running back. Uh, Adrian Peterson obviously has had some problems off the field. On the field, he's a Hall of Famer, at least he should be a projected Hall of Famer. Mm -hmm. Les, I'll start with you. Your thoughts. Is this just one of those look, see, get to know, see how things are, doing, are, are going? Or, is it, or is it, do you think this is serious about bringing in somebody like Peterson to split time with Ingram? I think it could be serious. I, I didn't see it coming. But, uh, I, you know, I, I think it's like so many of these um, visits from free agents that don't happen immediately at the start of free agency. It's going to come down to money. He's not going to be able to command the type of money he did in his prime. The Saints aren't going to pay that kind of money for a guy who's going to back up Mark Ingram. But you mentioned the guys on the roster. I don't think their number two running back is there. Mm -hmm. um, Tim Hightower, I agree, that's a big loss. Played well last year. I think he's a guy who's well respected by his teammates. Adrian Peterson, at this point in his career, coming back from all the injuries he's had, he's going to have to take on a lesser role. I think it could be a good fit with the Saints. I think despite off-the-field problems, I think football-wise, he's a guy who immediately commands respect in the locker room. So I think he could be a good fit here. 
if the dollars match up. I, and it wouldn't surprise me if some other team would be willing to pay more because they need him in a bigger role mm -hmm. than the Saints can give him. So I'm not sure it's going to work out, but I think there's a legitimate interest on both mm -hmm. sides. Yeah, 90-man roster in, the, in, 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 in training camp. Might as well kick the tires on him if you can get him. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, the Patriots brought him in, didn't sign him. Vikings want no part of him anymore. Right. He's out there. I don't know if he has a lot of takers right now. Mm -hmm. Obviously, his agent floated this out mm -hmm. here to NFL Network to get, get some pub, and it's not happening right now right. for him. So the Saints might be one of his only options. We talked about uh, off-air the running backs they have right behind mm -hmm. Mark Ingram, Daniel Lasco, Marcus Murphy, and Traveris Cadet. That's not a murderer's row of running backs. Uh, your, your best second running back is gone now, and he came on fire at the end. You need a guy between the tackles. I think AP is perfect. I, three years ago, he got in some trouble off the field with, with his son. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's in the past. The Saints need to win right away. Tom Benson's 90 years old. Drew Brees might be in the last year of his contract. Three years in a row of 7-9 football. I don't think the fans care about some off-the-field issues right now. They want to win. People are dropping their season tickets. They need a win right now to get those fans back. I agree. Garland, what about a running back in the draft? Uh, you know, some have projected the uh, Saints looking at Christian McCaffrey, uh, Mixon out of out of, uh, out of Oklahoma. Uh, there's been a talk of uh, Kamara out of um, out of uh, Tennessee. Also, Elijah McGuire out of ULL. Uh, uh, you know, those are just some of the names have been floated, but not those are not really for the most part between the tackle running backs. I guess Mixon, you could say, could go between the tackle. McCaffrey's a, a guy that could do that. Some of these other guys are more guys that can catch the ball at the backfield. What are your thoughts there? Well, Christian McCaffrey can play more than his running back, yes. and they're going to need a special teams guy. The problem is that the Saints aren't drafting him at 11, and I don't think McCaffrey's going to be there at 32. Mm -hmm. uh, Kamara uh, came in for a private workout. Mm -hmm. uh, Sean Fazan, uh, our Fox 8 reporter, that. Um, so in the second round, third round, that's where you're going to have to get somebody. I just... If you're a Saints fan, you want defense. You need a ton of defense. Mm -hmm. I don't think Saints fans want offensive players right, right. now. They, the, the offense is fine. I mean, the, the dump Brandon Cooks and, and go with Willie Sneed. Who wanted Willie Sneed two years ago? Right. No mm -hmm. one did. Drew Brees is the kingmaker. Look at the guys that have left the Saints. Have any of them done anything at right. wide receiver? If Marcus Colston would have left and played somewhere else, he would have done nothing. Mm -hmm. Robert Meacham got a big contract. Absolutely nothing. Lance Moore just disintegrated mm -hmm. everywhere else he went. I think Drew Brees can make a star at anybody. I could get ten catches yeah. doing some in routes. I'm not fast, right? But he can. I mean, he makes some. But you got stars. great hands. Yeah, I do have. Good Most of his receivers. I mean, Danny Amendola, right. Wes Walker. I, I think these guys can put anybody in their system and make them big time stars. So if you're uh, uh, backing the Saints, I say go all defense. Uh, get that rush lineman. Uh, on the end, get another linebacker because Danelle Elbery is going to get hurt in week one or week two of this season. Let me rephrase the question. Let's say <laughs> the pass rushing defensive end is not there at 11. Are they looking at a running back there? I don't think so. At least I wouldn't be mm -hmm. at that point. Uh, I, I think there's a good chance they will draft a running back at some mm -hmm. point. I don't see it happening in the first round, especially with the pick. At number 11, simply because, as Garland pointed out, I mean, there's so many needs on defense. And Sean Payton and Drew Brees have both shown during their tenure here that they don't need the type of running back you're going to use a first-round pick on. I mean, Pierre Thomas is a perfect example, undrafted free agent. They've had all kinds of guys who've come in. They've made them productive because they're not going to give the ball to a guy 25 times a game. Mark Ingram's already there. They need a role player at running back. I think with that 11th pick, they should pick the highest rated guy on their board. I don't think that's likely to be a running back. Mm -hmm. I don't think they need to reach. Right. If the pass rushing guy isn't there, maybe a cornerback is mm -hmm. there. You know, I don't know what other positions. They've signed some linebackers, mm -hmm. but they still can upgrade that yes. position. Yes. So I, I think they stick with their rankings, go with the best player there, because I, I don't think they're in a position to reach for one position because they have a variety of needs. As enticing as a Christian McCaffrey may be and what he can bring to the team, I mean, a Reggie Bush, Sproles type guy, I'm with you guys. They just need, they need playmakers on the defensive side of the ball, and they need it bad. And, of course, they're going to concentrate on, on that pass rush defensive end if they can get them. But still, there's a need at the cornerback position. Colin, you mentioned before we started the show. I mean, when you look at who's lining up at cornerback <laughs> yeah. on week one right now, that's not uh, a scary proposition for the opposing quarterback. No, P.J. Williams, who's been injured numerous times. Damian Swan, who has had concussion problems. Ken Crawley, an undrafted uh, free agent. 
Delvin Bro. Del- yeah, who's coming that, off an injury. Yeah, Delvin's mm-hmm. on one side. Right. I, I don't know if we're going to get into it in a little while, but I, I'll just throw it out now. Yeah. Malcolm Butler, he's your answer. It's gonna ha- it's gonna happen, I think. Mm-hmm. Uh, what, I don't think Malcolm Butler is going back to the Patriots after them signing Gilmore to a massive contract. Malcolm Butler feels probably slighted. He is not going to say anything because he does not want to burn that bridge and be and be known as a malcontent. That's that's not sellable around the NFL. I think it's going to happen. You know, Sean Payton at the NFL owners meetings last week said it's going to take time. Just relax. It's going to take time. I think it's going to happen. I think Bill Belichick and Sean Payton are very close. Uh, they've worked deals out before. I think this deal gets done. That's who's going to be your starting corner on the other side, so you can focus on other parts. Now, where they're going to give up, where they're going to give up, is the intriguing thing. Is yes. it 32 or is it second round number 11? That's that's right. the the one thing we're waiting on right now. Right, and and again, nothing can be done until uh, Butler signs his tender. He has until April 21st to be able to do that. I think that's when we may see this thing heat up, and that's right before the draft. Let, let's talk about Butler. What do you think? Mm-hmm. Do you think it's going to happen less? Uh, is 32 too much to give up for Malcolm Butler at this point, or would you look at maybe a corner coming out of college uh, at, at that third at that spot at 32? I don't think 32 is too much to give up for Malcolm Butler. You don't know what you're getting with uh, somebody you draft out of college. Pretty much anybody you draft, but a cornerback that's a really difficult position psychologically. And Malcolm Butler has done it in the NFL. He's proven he has the physical tools, the mental capability to handle the pressure that comes with that position. So I think knowing what you're getting with him at 32, I I think, is not too much to pay. Obviously, you'd prefer if you could get him for less than that. Mm -hmm. I think Sean Payton was was smart when he said that uh, we're not going to sign him to an offer sheet and give up the 11th pick. That's certainly not something you want to do. But Peyton said, and I thought it was a very revealing session he had last week at the owners' meeting. He seemed to be very forthcoming. But he said they're going to bring cornerbacks in before training camp. I think you're going to see more than one guy brought in. I think there's a good chance Malcolm Butler is going to be the primary person they bring in. But I think they're going to be looking at lesser free agents and certainly the draft. That's a position I think is going to see some changes between now and the start of training camp. Let's stay with that for a moment. Post free agency, the first round of free agency, we know that after teams draft, there's an opportunity at that point to be able to um, have uh, players uh, that, that get cut to come in, some veterans, especially when teams get, come in and bring in the cheaper version of the younger players. They got a veteran that they want, they want to let them go uh, for salary cap reasons, open up a roster spot. Post free agency, pre draft, I'll go with you first, Carl. What are, the, what are the needs of this team? Give me the top three needs in your opinion. I think the linebackers they brought in, A.J. Klein and Manti Teo, mm-hmm. I mean, how much really did they have left? Right. Unless Stephon Anthony, they got some master plan that we missed out mm-hmm. on, and he's going to come back and, and, and mm-hmm. set the world on fire. That's an intriguing one to find out what they're going to do with him because Maudie probably is not coming back. Agreed. Now, I know that he was good on special teams because he played a lot at linebacker. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, made a big sack at New York last year. Who, who's, who's your guy? I mean, Danielle Lillard going to get hurt again. So that's an intriguing thing. They, they get a linebacker. Edge rusher, definitely. The, you got because I think the middle's set now. Yeah. You got Sheldon Rankins and you got Nick Fairley in the middle. You got Cameron Jordan on one side. Who's the guy on the other side? That is that is going to be one of the top defensive lines in the NFL if they get another edge rusher. I, I'd be afraid if, if I'm another quarterback in the NFL, especially Cam Newton coming off a rough season. How is he going to be? They can they can put some major pressure on him. Right. Jameis Winston. Everybody was ready to put him as a a, 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 a big commodity this year. Didn't show up. And the Falcons are fragile. I'm really, I cannot yeah. wait to see how they come out yeah. this season after a, a blowing a 25 point lead. Mm-hmm. Less thoughts. Well, uh, certainly that edge rushing position is either uh, need number one or one A, along with cornerback. And th- the way the NFL is now, you need, God, you need six or seven cornerbacks who can play. Mm-hmm. And I, we just went through the list. I don't know how, you know, if they're healthy, they got maybe two or right. three guys you feel pretty comfortable right. but, with. But they, they still need to grow. I mean, you got yeah. guys, they haven't had a, a lot of, of NFL playing time for, for the most yeah. part at a high level. But go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, no, I, I think it's fair to say that there are multiple cornerbacks who will be in their regular rotation who are not on the roster right now because that's how much depth mm-hmm. you need. Linebacker, I agree with Garland. You know, they've added to their depth, I think. They have a bunch of 
adequate players, I would say. They don't have a big playmaker there. A lot of these guys are the same. They're kind of middle linebacker type guys. You don't have the real strong strong side guy. And, mm -hmm. you know, weak side has become such a big uh, position in the NFL now with the way offenses are set up and the way defenses try to match them. So, you know, I think they definitely can use – another linebacker, somebody who's an athletic guy on the outside. So there it is. I gave you three positions. Yeah. They're all on defense. Then let me, let me take the next next step. How critical are these first five picks in the, hundred, in the 103 uh, draft, pick, draft picks? Saints have five in the first 103. How, how critical are they? You know, I'm intrigued to see what they're going to do with Ted Ginn Jr. Uh, where is he going to play? Because obviously on special teams, we had some, the Saints had some major problems this year. Marcus Murphy was in and out of the lineup. Uh, who, who's going to be the guy? I mean, Brandon Cooks played some special teams. Who, I, I, Ted Ginn Jr. is going to be a very intriguing one. I think, like we've said before, they're gonna, I think he's going to become mm -hmm. a big-time name in New Orleans. I right. think he's going to do some damage this well, year. Especially just, on special teams, just his return ability is an upgrade for what they have right now. Yes. I, I'm intrigued to see if he's going to play both or what are they going to mm -hmm. do because yeah. none of those guys last year, uh, I mean, Murphy had a little little hint of maybe that he could, he could break out. Um, so I'm going to be intrigued with Ted Ginn. That, that, he's not getting a lot of run right now. Um, Okafor, we, we I, it's Sean. It was Sean did a film study. Mm -hmm. Sean Fazan did a film study, and I was extremely impressed with what, what Okafor could do right. at Rush. I I'm mean, telling you, Carl. I think he is the most underrated selection that they've made in free agency. Guy on a one-year deal, playing for his next contract, has been often injured, has proven that again when he's healthy, he can rush the passer. He's going to get every opportunity. If you look at the stats on Cam Jordan, what he's done as a, just a one-man gang on the other side, just give him someone that, that can be the Robin to his Batman, and that guy's going to excel. I really think Okafor's going to have a really good year this year. And they're hoping in a contract year it works out kind of the way Nick Farrell mm -hmm. did. Yes, because he no responded doubt. to the circumstances and he got sort of a hometown discount in being mm -hmm. able to re-sign him. And that was very helpful last year, and it should be helpful this year. So if that could work out the same way with Okafor, uh, that would be a big boost to the defense. Uh, I agree he's probably getting overlooked a little mm -hmm. bit in this free agent class. Uh, they still need some more guys who can do what he mm -hmm. does, but he gives them one person on the outside who, wh whether you, you consider him an end or a linebacker, he's an outside guy uh, who can put some pressure on the quarterback. And so I think he's a good pickup, but uh, you know, defensively, you know, the the, the more players, that, there aren't, there isn't a limit to the number of players they should bring in on defense. Right. And I, those five picks in the first hundred and three are huge. Right. And I, I think most should be on defense. So if, if the right person's there at the right time, I could see them mm -hmm. going. You know, one of the things uh, Peyton said last week is he talked about what a great class this is for running backs, mm -hmm. especially for guys who won't be first round picks, mm -hmm. but will go on to have big careers. Yes. So I think that's still a position to keep an eye on after the first I round. I totally agree with that. To me, uh, this is the most critical uh, first five picks uh, in, the, in the Peyton era. They've got to hit on these five picks this year. They got to get a repeat of what they did last year in terms of the, the, the type of performance they got out of their draft picks, guys getting on the field and making a difference. They need that infusion of young talent coming into this roster this year because let's face it, you got Breeze on a one year deal. People can say Peyton's got a long term deal, but I think he's still on a, he's on a one year deal as well, well depending on what's going to happen. Seven to nine just not going to make it uh, in this no. in, in this in this market this year when you look at look at the Saints. So I think it's critical, and that's why you know I think they got to have their ducks in a row, know who they're going to going to go after, and then that's why this Malcolm Butler thing is going to be intriguing. You know what will the Patriots want for him? Is it just thirty two? or Do they want another pick? You know I've said it before. I'd like to see this going to I'd like to see this go until after the draft and then give up a pick next year because, as I've said, time, I've said on this show and on the radio show, rarely have the Saints been in a position where they've been picking 10, 11, or 12 in the draft. It's normally been in the 20s, 30s. This is the time when you see the other teams in the division. This is where they've created their depth and where they've gotten a lot of the players that have really made a difference for their teams. Yeah, and uh, I would keep an eye on draft day itself. Bill, Bill Belichick's made a lot of draft day yes. trades to, to pick up additional picks. So uh, we'll see how it plays out. But I think once we get past that deadline, I think you said April 21st, yes. you know, draft day, and if it doesn't happen draft day, shortly thereafter, the Butler thing, 
uh, is worth worth watching. Another wild card that occurred to me, I'll just throw out there: if they were to go for somebody like Christian McCaffrey at eleven, could that be a sign that they don't think Drew Brees is coming back after this mm-hmm. year, and they need to start looking at how they're going to rebuild the offense, and whoever replaces him is not likely to be a guy mm-hmm. who's going to be able to handle the offense the way Drew Brees does. They're going to have to have somebody to lean on at running back and wide receiver and some other spots. Right. I want, they have something else for I want to come back on. for that. I want to come back with Leonard Fournette on, the, on, that, on that thought. But, Uh-oh. Rowan, you, you have a thought. <laughs> we, we are, we're talking defense. One thing we also got to remember, who usually who's making these picks on airline drive? Sean Payton is. Right. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, he, he – Shocker with Andres Pete a couple mm-hmm. of years ago. Yeah. We're saying defense, defense. Right. He's going to throw a curveball right. in. He can't gonna, help himself. Yeah, he's going to he's going to get another toy. I mean, look at tight end last year. How, right. how much money did they they throw at the Colts tight end? So, and he did not show up at all for mm-hmm. the, the Saints this mm-hmm. year. Uh, his name escapes me right now. Kobe Fleener. Yes, Kobe Fleener. Fleener at this right. moment. It was so forgettable. Season. Yeah. I forgot no, his name. But you're right. So you're right. there's going to. The, so we're talking defense. It's great. Right. Sean's going to drop one on us that we, we're not going to expect, especially maybe at 32. Mm-hmm. If Pat Mahomes is mm-hmm. waiting at 32. Right. Mahomes, right. Uh, Sean and I talked about it. I know I keep talking about Sean Zamp, but, but he's, he's our Saints he's guy. Saints guy, right. Yeah, so he and I just bounce. We sit in the office. Uh, a lot of you don't see on air, but we literally sit in the office, Wonka Cage, Sean, Chris Hagen, and I, and we sit there and talk like 30 minutes about what the Saints could do. We bounce things off each other. Mm-hmm. And I keep going back. I covered the Texas Bowl. And uh, it, when Pat Mahomes and it lost to LSU, he still scored 27 points mm-hmm. against him. He's a gunslinger. I love, I love that. I, I love, I would love that pick at 32 for the Saints because right. um, they're going to need a quarterback soon. Chase Daniels in a one-year deal. Right. Drew Brees might be gone. I think Mahomes could be possibly that answer at 32. That's going to be an intriguing one. And well, Peyton went and worked him out in person. Yes. Didn't he? Yes. That's a, that's yes, a shocker right there. Right. 32. Watch. Right. That, that's right. the kind of thing you look for. He's going to drop one in this first. Three, if they keep 11, 32, second round 11, he's going right. to dra- draft an offensive guy. It's, it's mm-hmm. going to happen. Right. I, I just no doubt I can feel it. Well, let, let's, let, let's talk a little bit about Leonard Fournette because you brought up something. Um, I've always felt that if Fournette would fall to the Saints, if it was a way to get Fournette, uh, you're looking at the future because what you're looking at is the ability to be able to protect Drew Brees as he gets a little bit older, even if he is to stay here. Uh, more of a bell cow type running back, a guy that you can you can lean on now. The running back and the defense, getting better on defense and the running back. Fournette can catch the ball at the backfield. Fournette can run between the tackles. Some people say that he's only an eye type back. He's going to need a full back. You know what? Uh, that that you have to see what will happen in the in the NFL with that. I don't think after coming back at 228 in his pro day and what he did on the on the combine. I don't think he gets past Carolina, number one. Mm-hmm. I'm hoping he ends up with either the Jets or Jacksonville. But just an intriguing thought, Fournette with the Saints, is this something you would do? If at, he fell to 11? 11. If he, if he fell, fell to, to 11. 11. Well, I said before, pick the guy who's highest on your board <laughs> when it's time to pick. Yes. If Leonard Fournette's there, I think he's got to be number one on your board, I, w- I would think. I, I don't think he'll fall to 11. Neither do I. If, uh, if he's there at 11, I think you pick him. And you figure it out, you know, you know how you tweak the offense mm. once you get him here. But he's too good a player to pass up. I, I don't think that's a guy you trade up and get. Mm-hmm. If they were picking a little higher, I don't know that they would pick him there. But if he fell to him at 11, I don't see how they could say no. Mm. First of all, everybody in New Orleans would go nuts if they passed oh, on gosh. the Oh, Every day I, I see oh. on social media, Twitter, LSU fans are just... Right. But then they always go back to the Saints hate LSU. Right. <laughs> well, Although, which is... Which is like, I, it's an urban myth. Right. I know they got Al Woods, the only one. They right. cut him in training camp, but he actually uh, turned out decent right. for the Tennessee Titans. But uh, This is the year, Colin. They will pick an LSU player this year. This is the year. Watch. <laughs> they, will, they, they want to shut everyone up. This is the year. And there are so many players on this team. And then you look at the connection between Ogeron and Peyton. This will be the year. I mean, I like Ethan Posick. I mean, everybody wants to talk about all the, all the sexy mm-hmm. picks out there. I think Posick is a perfect pick for this team, a guy that played multiple positions on the offensive line. I think he'll probably be there in the third round uh, when, when, they, when they pick. So, you know, to me, I think Posick would be, would be a marriage made in heaven for this team. But your, your thoughts on Fournette? If at 11. I mean, yeah. this is so hypothetical. <laughs> yeah. First off, yes, I would probably think he's not going to be there at 11. The Saints have no needs on offense. I mean, they have so many needs on defense. Right. I, 
I know they did it with Deuce McAllister. This was before that. Mm-hmm. This was the Hazel regime, and it turned out very well for yes, the New Orleans did. Saints. Even though they had what well, Ricky Williams mm-hmm. on the roster mm-hmm. at that point, though we knew Ricky was kind of a little off his game. I mean, mentally off mm-hmm. his game, not physically. But uh, that is a tough one, man. I just, I mean, Reggie Bush. They need, they needed Reggie Bush right. too. They yeah. had to have him. They needed to sell tickets. Mm-hmm. I just. I would say they'd have to pass on them, right. but I, I know it's best available. They, but I, I just can't see them taking a lot of Fournette. They got too many things they need on mm-hmm. defense right now. Thirty-two, they they can get a running back or a right. quarterback. At eleven, that is just wow. Yeah. But the other factor there is if Fournette should start start to fall, and I think if there was any chance of that, it was probably erased by the fact that he's lost mm-hmm. twelve pounds since the combine right. and his ankles getting sure. healthy. So I don't think that's going to happen. But if he starts going. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Somebody's going to try and jump, jump up, up there right. and pick him. Somebody who didn't think they'd have a shot at him that really needs a franchise running mm-hmm. back. And so the Saints or somebody else will be able to pick up extra picks by letting somebody jump in and take him. Yes. So even if he starts to slide, I don't see him making it to 11 because somebody will trade in front of the Saints and take him. You said uh, that the Saints are going to draft an LSU player. You knew it would be the, the, the really good one, the dark horse. Deion Jones only started one season mm-hmm. for the for LSU, yes. and he exploded. Right. Dave Aranda did fantastic work with Duke Riley this yes, year. He, he was a stud. I, I covered him all through Curtis. Mm-hmm. You, he's going to drop like fourth round, oh, yeah. fourth, fifth, maybe. Right. He's a linebacker. They need uh, they need some young guys that are not injury prone at linebacker. Right. I, I like Duke Riley, and he he has great personality. I've interviewed him numerous times. I mean, don't pay attention to the crazy blonde hair. He's, he's been doing that forever. Yeah. Uh, I mean, he grew up in Port Sulphur, went mm-hmm. to John Curtis. That, that's my guy. If you're going to say the Saints are going to draft an LSU guy, I say it's Duke Riley because Malachi Dupree, he's had a lot, of, he's had a lot more downs than ups. Yeah. Traven Doral, I, I, if, it's, if that's the guy that you're going to get from – if you're going to draft a guy from LSU, I think that's the guy. Right. Do, you have a, do you have a thought? If well, I, I like Duke Riley. I agree. Right. If you can get him in the fourth or fifth right. round, I think that would right. be a good pick. Right. I now think if they don't have a fourth or fifth round pick, they'd have to trade back into the draft. But but go ahead. I, I mean, I think the guy, obviously, Fournette's the head of this mm-hmm. class. But I think after him, the guy who's going to be a superstar is Jamal Adams. Right. Oh, yeah. He's and uh, whoever yeah. gets him, oh. uh, he's, he's going to be. At, a, with full 4-3-3 four, three, three at, the, at the pro day, I mean, he just, yeah. I mean, cha-ching. Yeah. I mean, as soon as he, as soon as he ran that. Any doubt of of, he, uh, of what he was going to do in the NFL went out the window when when it was four three three. I mean, yeah. uh, I, I think he's. I've seen some drafts where he's in the top ten. I think he's top five. Yeah, Les Miles, no doubt, knows how to draft studs. Can't coach them when they get to LSU mm. as a team. Yes, individuals. I mean, there's gonna there's gonna be a, a good amount of kids from this this team from LSU 2017. Kevin Tolliver will probably get his get everything together with Aranda. They'll have it again. Mm-hmm. Les Miles can recruit them. I mean, geez, they got they, they got the most on day one the NFL 2016. Oh, yeah. LSU had more kids in the uh, NFL on opening day rosters than Alabama did. And Alabama has won four national titles in nine years, and LSU had won one since 07. So he can recruit. Yeah. He, that was never a doubt. He just yeah, can't coach. Just him. can't coach him. We'll see what, what uh, Coach O can do with that. They waive Luke McCown. They uh, save uh, one point five million dollars against the cap this year. There's two hundred fifty thousand dollars in dead money. They signed Chase Daniel before that one year nine hundred thousand uh, uh, dollars, and he gets a three million dollars in incentive based on uh, playing time, etc. Uh, good move, bad move, uh, changing Daniel for McCown. Uh, I don't think it makes a whole lot of difference. If either one of them played any significant amount of time, the season's lost anyway. So, yeah. I mean, if, if you're losing Drew Brees, meant to that. Uh, it's not going to make any difference which one of them steps in. But he's a guy uh, they're familiar with. I think Very Sean familiar, Payton's yeah. comfortable with. Uh, so I, I, I don't think it's necessarily an upgrade over McCown, but I don't think it's a downgrade either. I, I think it's just a, a different guy filling the same role. I, I, I think uh, Chase Daniel played his cards and put him out on the table when he did his conference call there. He said he talked with Drew a lot this offseason. So I think they yeah, guaranteed... What did you read into that? I think because they gar- First off, I knew that mean, they meant that gar- they guaranteed him the number two spot. Mm-hmm. Like they were, getting, they were getting rid of Luke. Right. And then last Friday, it was brought up to Drew that, you know, Chase signed and he's like, yeah, it's not, you know, Luke McCown, you know, it's not a good deal for him, you know. I, 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 I knew when those, I heard those two things, but Chase Daniels has been talking a lot to Drew Brees off season. Maybe Brees is working and like, hey, this, this might be the end for me, man. One more year. See. I mean, Daniels not, Daniel's not an awful option if he's going to be your, your starting quarterback in 2018, but it depends who they draft this year. If they draft mm-hmm. a Mahomes 
or I don't think Deshaun Watson's dropping into drop 32. I don't want to see Deshaun Kaiser in New Orleans. That is not a good mm-hmm. quarterback. Uh, uh, Sean Fazan and his mock draft had Davis Webb in the second round yeah. from Cal. That's an intriguing one. Yeah. But we'll see who, who Chase Daniel is back up. In 2018, I mean, he knows how to run the system. We'll see what they go. But I think it's a great pickup because you know why? He's much younger than Luke. Luke yeah. has got – Five no, years younger. Yeah, five mm-hmm. years younger. Uh, Luke McCown's probably done. This is yeah. the, Those McCowns just never die. Right. I mean, Josh McCown's still rolling around right, the league. Right. And, and remember, Luke's got a back injury, and that might have been part of it as yes. well. Yeah. I, I what did find it intriguing that, that Chase talked about starting, okay, coming to – you know, which, again, there's only one way you're starting, and that's if the other guy's in the infirmary. Uh, <laughs> you know, I mean, but – you know, I, I, I kind of read into it that as well. Man, look, what, what does this mean long term? Is this Breeze telling him, look, we don't make the playoffs. I'm going. I'm out. Do you remember mm-hmm. one during OTAs and one mandatory minicamp one year before Drew signed his new contract? Mm-hmm. Chase Daniel was the starting right. quarterback. We had, I was looking through some file mm-hmm. video. We had a ton of Chase Daniel mm-hmm. one minicamp because he was the starting quarterback. Mm-hmm. So, hey, he was starter quarterback yeah. in the yeah. offseason for the Saints. <laughs> Before Bree signed right. his, uh, his, the contract before last contract. Right, no doubt. You're watching Inside New Orleans Sports each and every Thursday night right here on WLET with our live broadcast. You can catch us at uh, 10 o'clock on, on Thursday nights at, um, on Cox 130. Friday nights, 9 o'clock on Pelican, 10 o'clock right here on LAE. And if you're up at 2 a.m. in the morning on Saturday morning, you can catch us on Cox 130. God bless you for doing that, I can tell you that. <laughs> We're going to take a quick break. Les East is with us along with Garland Gillen. Uh, we'll come back, talk a little Pelicans, then we'll open up the phone lines. Located at 3701 Iberville Street in Mid-City is Katie's Restaurant and Bar. Open seven days a week, Katie's offers daily specials for lunch, dinner, and Sunday brunch. Serving New Orleans cuisine such as fried shrimp platters, grilled redfish, and a fully stocked bar. And don't forget about our expanded event seating and local entertainment. Featured on the Best of Food Network's diners, drive-ins, and dives, Katie's Restaurant and Bar. Amco Fence, locally owned and operated since 1976. Fully licensed and insured and a member of the BBB, Amco serves both residential and commercial customers. If you're looking to repair, replace, or install a fence for security or aesthetic reasons, Amco Fence supplies wooden, metal, chain link, vinyl, and ornamental or automatic gates. Amco aims to satisfy your fencing needs. Amco Fence, 504-468-9559 or amcofencecompany.com. TikTok Cafe, located on Causeway South at the I-10 in Metairie, is open 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days a year. Our menu offers breakfast dishes like our Western omelet made from scratch biscuits, grits, egg sunny side up, and lunch specials like our homemade cheeseburgers with a side of golden brown fries. Don't forget about our weekday lunch special and that every Tuesday is steak night. TikTok Cafe, open 24-7 at Causeway South at the I-10 in Metairie. Welcome back to Inside New Orleans Sports. I'm your host, Eric Ash. Let's talk a little Pelicans now in this segment. Uh, well, yeah, we got to talk a little some Pelicans. <laughs> uh, out of the playoffs again. Uh, now at this point, uh, the, uh, go to, when, when you go to church on Sunday, how about uh, you know, saying a prayer? If you do a little novena, uh, they got uh, this, the, the first round pick is protected, one through three. So much like the Anthony Davis situation, the ping pong balls have to follow the uh, Pelicans' way. If that's the case, then they'll get a draft choice to be able to come in and uh, hopefully, if they don't trade the draft choice, I said on my radio show today, if Dell Demp is still here, I think he trades the draft choice. But they get a they get a young player that can come in and, and be able to help them almost immediately, and they're going to need some help, folks. And, and let me run through this very very quickly for those that don't realize this: uh, the Pelicans don't have a lot of money to spend uh, right now. They got about eighty eight million dollars pledged to the con- to the uh, to the uh, salary cap next year. And they, if they sign Drew Holiday back to a max contract, which would be about $16 million a year for him, they'll have the mid-level exception for two to four years for $8.3 million. They'll have the biannual exception, one to two years for $3 million. And they'll have a trade exception at $3.6 million to spend. That's it. Uh, when you look at the, um, the roster right now, they, they've made some really bad deals. You've got uh, Ameris Sheik, where they owe $33 million to him over three years, $11 million a year. Mm. Pond Dexter, who hasn't played in, in, in two years, $3 million in his last year of his deal. Both those guys at this point, um, uh, something's going to happen with them contractually, uh, you know, whether they, they do the stretch provision on them so they can, they can add some salary cap money 
Uh, that will probably be one option for them. Uh, Dante Cunningham is at a three three point one million dollar player option. The way he's played this year, he's probably gone because he's going to get more money uh, probably on the open market than the Pelicans are willing to pay, or willing to pay him. And then you look at some of the other contracts right now. You've got each one more at three years, twenty six million. Uh, Hill at three years, thirty eight million. Uh, Frazier one year, two million. Crawford one year uh, minimum, and then Boogie one year, sixteen million. And of course, four years, one hundred five million for AD. And that's uh, with the uh, last year as a player option. Um, that the, that's the twenty nine million, and then uh, Agensa two years, eleven million dollars. Guys, not a, outside of Boogie and 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 AD, it doesn't scare you much when you look at the rest of the players they have on this roster. Uh, they, they lack talent. There's some conjecture on whether Drew Holiday even wants to come back. I mentioned this on my radio show the other day. Re- Go back in your mind's eye and tell me one time you've ever heard Drew Holiday say how much he loves New Orleans and how much he loves playing for the Pelicans. I cannot remember him saying that one time since he's been here the last four years. Uh, There's been a lot of talk that he wants to play with his brother, Justin Holiday, elsewhere. They like to team up on a team. Uh, I don't know if that happens here in New Orleans. Uh, I'm just giving you the bad news. There's not a lot of money to spend, and when you look at the way this team is right now, uh, they're going to need someone that can navigate this salary cap. And I'm going to tell you right now, it's not Dell Demps. Dell Demps has put them in this position right now with horrible contracts. Uh, and, and basically, their hands are, they're, they're basically they're as handcuffed as you can get when it comes to an NBA team, even with the salary cap rising in the, in the NBA. I'll take you first. Doesn't look too, doesn't look too good on, on the salary cap front in terms of adding talent around Cousins and AD. No, it doesn't, and uh, there, there are three major personnel decisions that are intertwined. Drew Holiday, Alvin Gentry, Dell Demps. Agreed. And I think it's looking like Gentry and Demps will be back, two moves I do, would not agree with, but that's the way it looks. So focusing on Holiday, he's a good player. I'd like to have him back. Is he a max player, though? No, that's the problem. He's not worth what they would have to pay to keep him and they have so many pieces they have to they have two tremendous pieces but they still have a lot they have to fill in around them they can't afford to spend that kind of money on Drew Holiday they're better off dividing that up under multiple players wherever they come from and trying to fill in and just build around those two big guys cuz those are, you know Rick Carlisle was talking I covered the, the mm-hmm. game against Dallas last week and he got a lot of questions about how do you handle these two guys together and, you know, making this change in midseason. You know, and every answer was basically the same, like, you know, it, it'll work out. You know, anybody would love to have that problem, trying to figure out how to fit those two big guys together. The problem is you have to surround them with, with several pieces, and uh, they, they can't afford to spend what they would have to spend to keep Drew a holiday. So I think that money has to be spread out on other players. Yeah. I think Drew Holiday is gone. I think you have to spread it out on other players. I think the number one priority, though, this offseason is re-signing Boogie. That is the only way you're going to keep AD. Would, would you try to do it now? Would you try I to do would. You've seen what they've done together. Right. They, they, could, they could do some damage not only on the court but in the ticket yeah. office. I, you, you've seen the, the fans. Now, I've not been to a, a game in a couple of weeks, but mm-hmm. I, I watch the games on television. Yes. There's a lot more fans in those lower areas oh, oh yeah. than they've been sure. in the last few weeks. I think they're going to sell more tickets next year with Boogie and Brow. Obviously, the T-shirts are already selling big mm-hmm. time. I see a lot of people wearing them mm-hmm. around town. Um, that's the number one priority, I think, is the, the resign right. Boogie. Get it done right now. Well, let, let's talk about that for a second. I want to get back to, to, to okay. Del Demps and, and, um, and Alvin Gentry with you as well. Uh, he loses $30 million in the trade, okay? I mean, uh, Sacramento could have given him $30 million more than any other team. Right. Um, he, if he re-signs with the Pelicans, he can make up all but ten million of that. Okay, so he can make, which which tells me that he's not going anywhere. Because if he re-signs elsewhere, all he can make up is ten million. Yeah. So I mean, he's not going to walk away from twenty million dollars. Nobody walks away. Sad. He didn't want to walk away from twenty million dollars. No. Okay, so I think he's going to re-sign with the Pelicans just from a, you know, he's close to Mobile, playing with Anthony Davis, and, and then the money. Okay, just the money itself, unless it is 
untenable. Doesn't like the coach, doesn't like the general manager, etc. So I think he comes back no matter what. I just wonder if you sign him now or you let him play out that option. But you know, maybe you can work it so that maybe you have a little bit money, more money under the cap this year that you can add some other players. It'll be interesting to see. The NBA salary cap is so much different than the NFL salary cap because the NBA cap, salary cap, they, there is no forgiveness. Mm -hmm. You sign a player, you're stuck with that player uh, until the end of their contract. Let me ask you this. Dell Demps, Alvin Gentry. Did, have they done enough to return, in your opinion? I think they are going to return because I, I, I just don't know how much still interest on airline drive there is for the Pelicans. Uh, the, the Saints have always been number one. They're Who's going number, to be number two now? Horse racing? Well, oh, Garland, you're out there all the time. I, talk, I, I mean, I talked to uh, Mrs. Gail Benson recently. Mm -hmm. We talked more about her. They have 10 two-year-old horses. Right. And if you're a horse racing fan, I'll, I'll just break it down for you quickly. Uh, Three-year-old season's the key. That, that's where you're racing all the triple crown racing. Uh, so they're getting ready for next season. They signed ten. They got ten two-year-olds. They spent a ton of money on these ten two-year-old horses, and they bought this massive farm right outside Lexington. They spent a ton of money. Literally, they left everything. The people they bought from, he left everything. Paintings on the walls, everything. They they're spending a lot of time there. I think that's their number two love right now. Mm -hmm. I know they go to every game. Yes, I understand. They it. do. Yeah, and I, I asked uh, Gail Benson that recently. I was like, I'm like, were you a basketball fan before like you married Tom? She's like, no. She's like, but I, I, I watch every game now. So give it to them to show up to every game because there's some yeah. of those games on Tuesdays Ooh. and Wednesday nights. We got to watch them. <laughs> yeah, I, it, they're tough. So I give it to that. No, I, don't, I, think, I think the Pelicans are still number three. I think it's Saints, GMB Racing, and Pelicans. And I think Danny Ferry might have. What, what is Danny Ferry doing, by the way? I don't know. Is he even around anymore? I, I want to know. That, that's that's like an intriguing question as I've been broached yeah. recently what he's up to. But I, I think Del Demps and Alvin Gentry stay just because status quo. Let's, let's see what. The, the, I think the end of the season saved both of them. If, if there would have been a bomb, if Boogie and Brow would have like totally just bombed out and had been ugly, right. then. But, but it, it is a bomb, Garland. It is a bomb. It's, well, seven, it's seven years, one playoff appearance. Yeah. It, it's the luck of the ping pong balls following your way. And you get Anthony Davis. It's a, a fire sale for the Sacramento Kings who don't want to trade Boogie Cousins to the L.A. Lakers right down the, right down, right up the, the road in, in, in California. So, so they, they end up, couldn't, couldn't send him to the Eastern Conference. So the owner's in love with Buddy Heald, so they make the deal with, with Buddy Heald. No. They need to bring out the pressure washer, and they need to pressure wash the entire organization. I'm telling you right now, you're, you're only holding up the inevitable, which is a guy that has destroyed this team in terms of his management uh, of the salary cap, what he's done in terms of bringing in. Look, great at bringing in guys off the, the, that are bench players. He was a, a, a general manager of the D-League. He does great at that. He was great in terms of bringing in European players for a while there. He had, again, he's a guy that scouts Europe pretty well but he's not an NBA general manager. I'm sorry. The, the guy has, has had set. How many times do you get to reset three times in seven years? Come on. It doesn't happen in professional sports. Can any of those two-year-old studs play shooting guard, <laughs> small forward? That might solve some of these problems. Eric, you know what, we know what uh, other part of the problem is? Is that the fans in New Orleans, I, I just don't, I don't see the interest. I, I, but I, but that's, that's, the, that's the Pelicans' fault. You know, let me yeah. say, if, if, if there was interest... Remember when David West and Tyson Chandler and Chris Paul were here? 2008, I remember vividly. Okay, Drew I mean, Brees was at every, come on. every game in the playoffs. The, you, uh, the, it was when the Pelicans, when the Hornets first got here. It was, it was the, the, everybody wanted to be seen and be at those games. People went. People, the, they have killed, crushed the average NBA fan in this city. Okay, I'm, talking about the, I'm not talking about the diehard. That's going to be, I'm talking about the average NBA fan that would love to go see a game, but it's not going to waste their time. Boogie and the Brow have maybe piqued their interest, but they're not. They're also sophisticated enough to know they need to surround them with better players. And I don't trust Dell Demps to get it done. And just honestly, just kind of being in, in the guy that Demps brought in in Alvin Gentry, you know, I think he's a nice guy. I think he's a pretty good coach. I, I think that ultimately, um, I don't think his system works with the guys that are brought here. I think he was given a, 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 a bad deck in terms of the personnel he's got. But a new broom sweeps clean. And like I said, I wouldn't bring the broom. I'm bringing out the pressure washer. I'm getting rid of everybody over there. Well, you know, I wrote after they started the season 0-8. I wrote for SportsNola.com that they need to get rid of both of them. I, I agree with you. It's probably not going to happen. No. But uh, I, I think they need to for all the reasons you just explained. Uh, <laughs> I hate to keep harping on this, but if Alvin Gentry was the best you could do, you never should have gotten rid of Monty Williams. 
or you should have at least let him coach out that final year of his contract. But now that you've done that, you need to recognize a mistake, break ties with both of them, get a respected, knowledgeable GM, and let him hire a coach. I don't know if Jeff Van Gundy's the answer, but at least he has. We heard rumors he has about Joe Dumars last week once again. Joe Dumars would oh, be. Oh boy! I, well, yeah, that might not go away. Right. I'm, not, now, I'm, I'm telling would, you. Well, I think that would pique, pique people's well, interest. He's from Louisiana. Right. He's, he's won. A, he's, he's won a championship. championships. Right. He's got front office experience. That that's a legitimate front office guy. Let him pick a coach. That's the only thing that's going to generate enthusiasm, yes. especially with the limitations they have financially in upgrading the roster. Mm -hmm. But you bring in the right coach, those two big guys, any coach can make you a contender yes. right away, even with the lesser pieces around them. I agree. You're not going to contend for a championship until you fill in around mm -hmm. them, but you can contend for the eighth spot and maybe seventh or sixth in the West if you get the right coach just with those two big guys. You can't overpay for average talent, and that's what they've done. Each one more is a nice player, but you know, again, you, you you don't you don't give him four years uh, you know, when he's got three years, twenty six million left. Uh, you know, Hill. I mean, up until he started hitting some shots toward the end of, end of the season, he was an eleven million dollar pick. I mean, that's pretty much that and playing defense. And that's almost say, well, you have to overpay New Orleans. Well, you don't have to overpay New Orleans anymore because you've got two legitimate superstars. Guys should be wanting to come to play in New Orleans uh, for the biannual exception, the mid level exception that, that have a chance to be able to win and. You know, bottom line is, at this point, they're, they're in cap hell, much like the Saints were. It's so re unbelievable how much they mirror each other in terms, of, in terms of cap management out there. And I think that they will motivate the fan base if, when this season ends, they go in and, and, and they cut ties with everyone that, it, that, that has been involved in this organization, um, you know, in terms of, of uh, the uh, coaching staff and, and also the uh, general manager. But mostly, honestly the general manager, who I think has not done enough in, in, in a bottom-line business to keep his job. And Eric, who, who makes that call, though? Who, who's going to fire him off? I don't know. And, is and, it uh, Mickey? Uh, Mickey? Mickey's trying to save his own hide right now. Three, seven, and nine seasons. Is it Tom Benson? Is it Dennis right. Lauscha? Well, it's a love fest out there, though. You know, uh, you know, the one thing I keep hearing is, we really like Dell. Well, uh, you know, I really like Dell too. Dell's a nice guy, <laughs> you know, but I mean, you know. Monty was a great, Mo we loved Monty Williams. We loved Monty Williams. Yeah. And that's the other thing about it. There was a quote unquote coup, okay? There was a power struggle. Dell won. Well, what has Dell done since he won the power struggle? Two straight years of no playoffs. Signing and, a bunch of centers that right, are garbage. I mean, the, the Omer Sheik deal, I mean, I would have went without a center rather than paying him for, what is it, $54 million Jeez. over four years? Yeah. I mean, that was ridiculous. And the guy cannot play. He's done, he's finished. I mean, if you had that $33 million right now over the next three years, what could you do with that? It, it, you know, in, in terms of building this roster up. So, no, I mean, again, it's, it's unforgivable what has happened out there in terms of the salary cap and, and, and the type of players that they brought in. And at some point, you know, I think they, they, they've got a saving grace now with Anthony Davis and Boogie coming together because I think Davis sees somebody, okay, I got, I've got somebody that is a legitimate superstar next to me. So I think those two can coexist. How are you going to fill in around them? Well, and the other problem is with Cousins, and I agree with you, they should look very closely at trying to get a long-term deal done this offseason. Yes. But I don't know that that's something that they're really motivated to do. If they don't, and they start off next year the way they started off the last two years under Alvin Gentry, where they're basically out of it by Thanksgiving, then all of a sudden you have a fire sale <laughs> At the yeah. trading deadlines, right. and you get rid of him. Everybody knows you're going to lose him. And it's another agency. lost season. So you get rid of him. you got nothing to show for it. It's another lost season. AD's a year closer to his contract mm -hmm. being up, and it, it's, it's a mess. That's what they need to nip it in the bud right now and make those changes, look at long-term with Cousins, fill in around them as best they can and get new leadership, and it's not going to happen. I'm going to kill one other myth on the show. So there was a myth that the Saints hate LSU, which mm -hmm. isn't true. Right. Just, you, you, everybody has a scout in this league, okay? They, 32 teams, just because it's an hour away doesn't mean right. that, that the, the, the Saints can get more access to LSU than the other. Now, Ed Ogeron helps. The second myth is that Chris Paul is not coming to New Orleans. We talked about this, and we didn't bring it up on the right. show. He ain't coming. No. Let's end this right not now. Happening. He ain't, it ain't happening. He's going to stay in L.A. He loves his State Farm mm -hmm. commercials. Uh, he likes to hang out with Blake Griffin. I think Griffin's not going to go to OKC, right. so they're going to stay together. 
uh, Jordan. I think he likes his commercials. And he can he make more money in, 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 with the Clippers than he can make anywhere else. And he's making a lot of money. with. He's going right. to lose some of his advertisers right. possibly comes to New Orleans. Yeah. I think he's staying there in the bright lights of L.A. So let's yeah. let's kill that one right now. Yeah, they ain't happening. I agree 100%. Let's get to the phone callers. Uh, they lined up for us. Brian is in Metairie. Brian, welcome to Inside New Orleans Sports. Hey, Brian. Hi, gentlemen. How y'all doing tonight? Great, Brian. Uh, Mike told me to tell you hi, by the way, uh, with that TikTok. Uh, first off, I want to talk about the Saints draft. And this is just a Saints fan speaking. And, you know, um, if we see anything come on the board the night of the draft other than defense, <laughs> uh, it's, a, it's not going to be a good draft. There is no excuse to get a quarterback for the future, mm-hmm. a running back for the past, a tight end because we like him. We need the only possible acceptable offensive player I would allow would be some depth for the offensive line before somebody kills Drew Brees. Uh, and secondly, I got friends of mine, and we go to games, Pelican games, and we go to, you know, we, we might not be season ticket holders, but we go. If Dale Demps and Gentry stay, I won't step foot in the arena. I'm done. There you go. Brian, thanks for the phone call. I agree with you 150%, Eric. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the phone call. Uh, To Greg and Homer. Greg, welcome. You're on Inside New Orleans Sports. Uh, Hey, guys. I'm going to talk about the Malcolm Butler Mm -hmm. and Richard Sherman. So we've heard that Sean Payton said, you know what? I'm not giving up my 11th pick for uh, Malcolm Butler. But, hey, let's give up, you know, our 32 pick for Richard Sherman and I'd like to hear your opinion on that. Okay. Guys, Richard Sermon over Malcolm Butler, because that's what it would be. Sherman's a little bit older. Uh, I think about three years older. He's, got, he's, he's averaging $16 million on his contract. I think he's got three, two or three years left on that deal. All other things being equal, I think I would go for Sherman, even though he's a little older. But I don't think all things would be equal. Mm-hmm. I think you would have to pay more either in terms of what it would take to get mm-hmm. him uh, trade-wise right. or what it would take to pay him. So... Uh, I would go with uh, Butler for that reason, but Sherman's a hell of a player. I just don't think Sherman, I think probably Sherman's getting shopped right now, but it, it, a reading between the lines, reading what the general manager said, I think he's going to stay in, in Seattle. It'd be intriguing, though, to see him in that locker room. He's an extremely strong personality, oh, yes. and, and Drew runs that locker room. They, there's, mm-hmm. The defense has leaders, but Drew is the, the, the one out of those 53. It, it's his way. And Sherman, that would be interesting to have him there because mm-hmm. Kenny Vaccaro is now coming out and talking a lot more. Right. I, th- I feel like Vaccaro has now become the leader, the mm-hmm. vocal leader of the defense. And uh, I'd be intrigued to see if he would come, but I just don't see it happening. Stanley is in New Orleans. Stanley, welcome to Inside New Orleans Sports. Hey, Stanley. Hey, thank you. Thank you for taking my call. Thank I'm going to need a minute. Here's the deal. First and foremost, this is not a basketball town. You need a general manager for basketball and football. There has, the Pelicans have always been and always will be number three. And if you really want a good, a good basketball team, you need management in there where their priority is basketball, not Saints and basketball. This has done a decent job, not great, but decent, with his hands being tied. This was a great move with Booker. It was a great move, get it, because they needed a gorilla. They needed a gorilla to go with, 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 with AB. And you do need some more people around it. But as long as this is a football town, the priority will not be basketball. It will be football. It may appear to be, but it will always be football. Thank you. Thank you, Stanley. Appreciate it, guys. You know what? The Pelicans missed their window. When we talk about 2008, the Saints were awful that season. They were awful in 07. They were awful in 08. And the Saints have gone 7-9 and nine in the last three seasons. The, they had, the Pelicans had their opening. People are trying to find a winner. People love winners. They just, they'll just they jump on any bandwagon if they're winning. And the Saints bandwagon is busted. The LSU football bandwagon is busted right now. The Pelicans were going to be the saving grace this year, and they busted too. It, it's, it, it's, a, it's a city of losers right now, and the, and the fans are looking for a winner, oh. and they don't know where to look right, right. now. We, they just want to go to the playoffs in one sport. Well, after Katrina, it was incredible. The, the, the run that LSU had, the Saints had, the Pelicans, um, the, then the Hornets had, and we haven't seen that with, since then. Let me put it in business terms that Tom Benson mm-hmm. can relate to. People are going to show up and watch the Saints no matter what. They've been sold out on season mm-hmm. tickets since post-Katrina. The only way people are going to show up in big numbers to watch the Pelicans is if they have a winner. So if you want to look at it from that perspective, 
you should be devoting a lot more attention to improving the Pelican's product because that's where you're going to make more money. You've maxed out on what you're going to yes. make from the Saints. You need to light a fire under the fan base to come out and buy more tickets for the Pelicans. They're only going to do that, like you said, if they're winning. Yep. They have two great pieces to yes. build around. Yes. Build up that roster, make that team a winner, and you're going to make more money. Will is in New Orleans. Will, welcome to Inside New Orleans Sports. Hey, Will. How you doing? Uh, I just wanted to make a comment about uh, the coaching. Um, when I watch the games, I see – Alvin Gentry on the sidelines, and I also see Robert Pack on the sidelines. It seems as though the players respond well to Robert Pack, and I see that um, he's very knowledgeable about the game. Do you think we have our head coach, our next head coach in-house already? Uh, you know, Will, thank you for the phone call. I will say this. I mentioned the coaching staff. The, the, the assistant coach are not bad. They got some pretty good assistant coaches on, 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 that, on that team. I just think they're going to need a name, Okay. Uh, when, when, with, with, with the, Pack's with never the, been a head coach ever. Pack's never been a head coach. That, that's oh, really hurting Robert uh, Pack. He's a, right. he's, a co he's a coach's player. Oh. Uh, I mean, he was in the league. Oh, yeah. A lot of those coaches I on agree. the sideline didn't play in the NBA, so mm -hmm. they relate to Robert right. Pack. But I just, right. I, I mean, he's got to get a college job or get somewhere where he can be the head man right. before he can be the, the man. I agree Pelicans. with that as well. Martin is in Destrahan. Hey, Martin. Welcome to Inside New Orleans Sports. Hey, how y'all doing, gentlemen? Good. Uh, what I want to ask, I heard y'all throwing a lot of LSU names around. Mm -hmm when it pertains to the Saints draft, and I just want to know what y'all think about going ahead and nipping in the bud to Davius White, number 11, to the Saints. <laughs> Thank you for the phone call. I think that's a little high yeah. for, for Davius White, but I tell you what, they don't make the deal for Malcolm Butler. He's at 32. I jump all over it. You can play two positions, though. I think less would less would uh, go otherwise on Tredavious yeah. White. I think he had alluded to earlier that he didn't like that at 32. I'm not a big fan of his. You know, I, I know the, the numbers and everything, and he may be uh, scouted very high. I just look at his productivity at LSU throughout his career, and it did not impress me. At 32, it, it, it shrieks to see. I think the Malcolm Butler deal is going to be done. And I think in the long run, I think it's yeah. going to be the 32 picks. So we might be just talking about a, a subject uh, going into the draft that might be mute. But yeah. we'll, we'll see. I think, I think Butler's probably going to want to be that 32. I, I do like Tredavious White. I just don't like him at 11. No, uh, gosh, I, no. I don't like him at 11. No. Uh, and, and nor do I like any of the cornerbacks in this draft at 11, to be honest with you. The guy from, I oh, was it Lattimore from, from Ohio State who's got some leg injuries. You know, and that's why I'm wondering, you know, if the pass rush is not there at 11, what do they do? You know, do they trade back and maybe pick some, pick up some extra picks, which again would probably help them, or, or do you know, do they settle? Do they go for the offensive player at that point? Uh, you know, I just to me, uh, the 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 cornerback uh, position at eleven is not as strong, in, in my opinion. In my opinion, I'm just hoping to see some reaches by some teams in front of the Saints to get quarterbacks. Yeah. You know, that yes. they don't expect go off the board. That right. that's going to be very intriguing. That's going to help the Saints out big. I think one of these teams is desperate and they're going to make a reach. And I don't think they need a pass rushing outside the linebacker. I think they need a defensive end, a pass rushing defensive end, no doubt. And uh, it's very rare that you find any cornerback who's worth the 11th mm -hmm. pick in the draft. You know, Deion Sanders, yeah, you get somebody like that, but. You know, that's a position. you got to be a rare guy right. to be worth the 11th pick. I know it's an important position, mm -hmm. but not too many guys are good enough to warrant that kind of pick. No doubt about it. Lessie, Scarlin Gillen, thanks for being with us tonight on Inside New Orleans Sports. Thanks for tuning in. Remember, there's a rebroadcast of this program tonight at 10 o'clock on uh, Cox 130 on Friday nights uh, at 10 o'clock here on WLAE. And, yeah, if you're up at 2 a.m., you can catch us on Cox 130, also 9 o'clock on Pelican on Friday. Uh, don't forget to catch me on the radio, 990 AM WGSO. That's 11 AM until 1 PM weekdays. You can catch us on the TuneIn Radio app. You can listen live, download the podcast at ericasher.com, and all the previous episodes of Inside New Orleans Sports are at ericasher.com as well. Uh, again, special thanks to our guests tonight, Les Cease and Garland Gillen. Also to the WLE production staff, including Ron Yeager, Jim Dotson, Kenny Juno, Naila Jones, Richard King, Philip Williamson, and my director, William Hill. Thanks so much for watching. We'll catch you back next week for another edition of Inside New Orleans Sports. New Orleans Sports with Eric Asher is the first place award winner of the 2015 New Orleans Press Club's Excellence in Journalism Award for the category of Best TV Sports Show.